So this is section P.3. In your textbook, you guys have the textbook um, on Canvas, so you can look at it. It's a digital, I mean, it's not digital, it's the PDF, but if I was gonna ask you guys on number one for this warm up, this is from yesterday and the day before, if we're gonna find the distance between two numbers on a number line, remember, absolute value is the distance from a number to zero on the number line. So how far is it from negative three to, to zero on a number line? How, well, just from, from negative three to zero, how far is it? Three, three spaces. How far is it from 0 to 21? So how far are these two numbers really apart? 24. 24. Okay, good. If I was going to evaluate this, look, there's just a lot of absolute values, but that's okay. Work from inside where? Out. So I have, what's the absolute value of 6? Six? 6 minus the absolute value of 4. So what's the absolute value of 6 minus 4? 2. There you go. Good. If I was going to write negative 2 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 1, an interval notation. It's between what and what? What two numbers? <clears throat> negative 2, comma 1. Good. What is going to go on negative 2? Parenthesis or bracket? How come? Because it doesn't have the equal sign. It doesn't include. Good. What's going to go on the 1? A bracket because it does include. And then if I was going to graph it, <clears throat> here's my 0. So I have negative 2 here, and I have 1 here, right? You guys told me, is it open or closed at negative 2? Open. open, and what's going on at 1? Close, and then what do I do in the middle? Good, good job, guys. And then if I was going to graph the set, what does that notation mean right here? Intersection, good. It's what they have in common, right? Intersection. So between negative 4 and 6, and then between 0 and 8. <clears throat> so if I do negative 4, here's 0. Look, here's negative 4. I'll do it in different colors. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's negative 4, and then here's 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You guys agree with me there? Correct? Yes? Hello? All right, and then the other one is between 0 and 8. So what is the intersection between where and where? Between 0 and 6. Right here. There's your intersection. When they ask you to graph an intersection, you can either do three different graphs and then put what they have overlapping, or you just use different colors or different markings. We good? All right, <clears throat> moving on, guys. We're talking about exponential notations. What do you know about exponents? Where are they? Tell me. Top right. Top right. Is it a big number or a little number? Very tiny. It's a very tiny number. That's the exponent. So if I have this, a to the n power, which one is the base and which one is the exponent? a is the base and n is the exponent. Good. What does it mean? What does an exponent mean? Like if I have 4 to the third power, what does that mean? Four times itself three times. You're multiplying that number, that base, by itself however many times that little number says. So if we have this, <clears throat> I have one half to the fifth power. Now there's a bunch of rules we have to remember and we have to follow, so make sure you guys are paying attention to this. If I have a fraction and it is raised to an exponent, that exponent goes to the numerator and where? To the denominator. So this is really 1 to the 5th over 2 to the 5th. Questions about that? What's 1 to the 5th power? 1. What's 2 to the 5th power? 2 times 2 is? Times 2. Times 2. Times 2. There you go. All right, now let's look at... <clears throat> Let's look at these two examples. Are these the exact same thing? Why not? Because one is parentheses and one does not. The difference between B and C. B is saying take negative 3 and multiply it by itself four times. C is saying take 3, multiply it by itself four times, and make it what? 
Negative. Good. Do you guys see the difference? Yep. What did I tell you about negative numbers? They need a what? They're sad. What do they need? It needs a hug. Right? We feel bad for negative 3. This is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Now, some of you don't know what 3 to the 4th power is. That's okay. If I write it out, what's negative 3 times negative 3? Positive 9. <clears throat> and then over here, what's negative 3 times negative 3? Positive 9. So negative 3 to the 4th power is how much? 81. Good. Anything, guys, any negative raised to an even power, 2, 4, 6, 8, is going to be positive. C is negative 81. Yep. <clears throat> Brady said, so C is negative 81. Yes, because what this is saying is negative times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Because in our, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, what do we do first? PEMDAS, what's P? Parentheses, Parentheses then what? Exponents. Exponents. Right now, this negative outside just means times negative 1. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81, and I set my negative outside, so this is negative 81. So make sure you guys see the difference. B is telling you to plug in negative 3, or to use negative 3. C is telling you to do 3, and then make it negative. Okay, this is super important to remember. <clears throat> guys, anything. Write this down, star it, listen to me. Anything, whether it's a letter or a number, raised to the zero power equals one, anything. If I had 5,627 raised to the zero power, what's your answer? One. If I have negative A to the zero power, what's your answer? One. It's always going to be one. Another thing you need to remember is when you have a negative exponent, the way to rewrite it, because we don't ever leave anything with negative exponents, the way to rewrite it is to put it in a denominator. Or if it's in the denominator, God bless you, God bless you, put it in the numerator. What I mean by that, if I have 2 to the negative third power, we don't like negative exponents. The way that you make that negative 3 become positive is you move it to the denominator and it becomes positive. So 2 to the negative third power is really 1 over 2 cubed. And we'll talk about that. <coughs> A, I see 4 sevenths raised to the 0 power. What is it? One. one, good. B, how can I simplify that? We don't leave negative exponents. Okay, you flip it. Put a one, put a one, and then move it down to the denominator. Do I have to write the one? No. No, but you can if you want to. But negative exponents have to go down. Same thing with C. How can I rewrite that? Okay, flip it. One over negative two cubed, and we can still simplify that. What's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2? Negative 8. 1 over negative 8. You guys notice when you have an odd power, 3, 6, 9, something like that. No, just kidding. <laughs> 3, 5, 7. If you are cubing, raising to the fifth power, if it's negative, it's going to stay negative. Even powers become positive. Odd powers stay negative. So we're just going to have a whole bunch of exponent rules. You guys have seen these before. If I have the same base, <clears throat> you notice how in number one, let's look at the numbers. It's easier to look at numbers. Look at 3 to the second times 3 to the fifth. Do you see how the base is the same? They're both 3? So you add the exponents. Because what this is saying is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, right? How many 3s do I have there in total? How many do you see? Seven. Seven. So that's why we add the exponents. Same thing with division. When I'm dividing and I have the same base, what do I do with the exponents? Subtract them. Because look, if I write this out as three threes on top, four, five, and then I have two on the bottom. When you have a number on top or a number on the bottom, or a letter on top, letter on the bottom, they're exactly the same, what can you do? Cancel them out. So what am I left with? Three threes. That's why you can do that. So when you... Add exponents is when you're multiplying same base. Subtract exponents when you're dividing. Think about that. Addition, multiplication kind of goes together. Subtraction, division kind of goes together. If I look here, this is called a power raised to a power. Think of it as 2. If I wrote 2 and 5 like this, what does that mean to do? 
multiply, right? So that, look, is that not written that way? Two on the inside, five on the outside, so you multiply. So when you're, we're, and we'll do a bunch of these, I promise, just to get into the habit. But when you have one base and it's a power raised to a power, you multiply. Here, I have two inside. What do I have to do with the, this two on the outside? What do I have to do to the numbers? I have to distribute it. It goes to everything. And then you can simplify. Same thing here. We did this on our warm-up. <clears throat> I have a fraction, so I have to make sure I distribute to both. And again, I know that's a lot. You guys have seen it before, but we'll talk about it a little more. But we're going to do a ton of examples. These aren't that bad if you take your time. Like this. There's a lot going on here, yeah? Okay. Look at the first parenthesis. Just look at this one right here. Is there, are we adding, I mean, are we multiplying the same base? No. no. Are we dividing, anything like that? No. no. Do I have a power outside the exponent, I mean, outside the parentheses I have to do anything with? No? Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite this as 2a cubed b squared. Now I'm going to look at the second parenthesis. Do you see this 3 on the outside? That 3 has to go to every single thing inside the parentheses. So it goes here. So I have 3 cubed, it goes to the a, a cubed, and it goes here. If I have a power raised to a power, what do I do with the 4 and the 3? Good job. So b to the 12th. <clears throat> now we just simplify. What is 3 to the third power? Anybody? 3 times 3 is? Good. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3, so this is 27. Good. So I'm going to take the two numbers and I'm going to multiply them. What's 27 times 2? 54. Okay. Now I have a cubed and a cubed. If I have three a's in the first parenthesis and I have three a's in the second, how many total a's do I have? Six. So I have a to the sixth power, same base. We add. Then I have my B's. I have 2 here, and I have 12 here. It gives me a total of how many? There you go. Can I simplify this anymore? No. That's it. This is a whole bunch of simplifying. You're going to have to simplify numbers, and then just simplify variables as far as you can. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Again, if you just take your time, Look at each thing individually. If I have an exponent outside of a parenthesis, what do I do with that 3? It goes to where? Both of them. Good. It goes to the x, and it goes to the y. So I rewrite this as x cubed, y cubed. Agreed? Okay, good. Now what happens <clears throat> with the 4? It goes to everything. So I have y squared raised to the 4th power. y to the 8th. Awesome. x to the z to the good job now there's a lot going on in this problem there's a bunch of ways you can do this you can cross cancel you can combine all together i personally would tell you to just combine all together and then we'll worry about simplifying so let's look at the numerator do you have any variables that are the same yeah x right so i have three x's in the first one and four in the second gives me how many x to the 7th, and then y to the 8th, okay? Now in the denominator, do I have anything that's the same? No. Nope, so we're just going to rewrite them. y to the 3rd, z to the 4th. Now I look and I say, okay, I've simplified numerator, simplified denominator. Is there anything in the numerator and in the denominator that's the same? Y. Y's, right? What do I do when I'm dividing the same base? Subtract. <clears throat> because think about it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3. What do I do here? If I have 8 on top and 3 on the bottom, what can I do? I can cancel out 3 of them, right? What am I left with? 5. So my answer is x to the 7th, y to the 5th, over z to the 4th. How come I didn't put the y to the 5th in the, the denominator? Because they canceled out. Where did they cancel out? The bottom ones canceled out. You see that? If the if it was reversed <clears throat> and the A was on the bottom and three, the, then you'd have five left on the bottom. So you just got to pay attention to that. 
If you need to, guys, if you need to write it out like I did on the top, to write out eight Ys and write out three on the bottom and then cancel them out, do that. Then you see exactly how many letters you have and where they are, whether if they're in the numerator or the denominator. Takes two minutes. <clears throat> All right, when we talk about negative exponents and all that good stuff, remember, if an exponent is negative, you have to move it. If it's in the numerator, move it to the denominator. If it's in the denominator, move it up to the numerator. Meaning, we got this. Now, a lot of you are gonna wanna cross out stuff right away. That's fine, you can do that. I would take things one step at a time. I would just get everything for the exponents to be positive. So if I want my exponents all to be positive, what do I have on top? Thanks. Can six stay on top? Yes or no? Yeah. Can my S stay on top? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, thank you. What about T? No. no, T needs to go down because we need it to be positive. So look on the bottom. <clears throat> Two stays down? Yes. What about s to the negative second? It goes up, so I'm just gonna write again up here, and that becomes positive. And then what, what about t squared? Yeah, what? It stays down, good. Now we can simplify a little bit. Is there a number that goes into both six and two? Two, two goes into two once, two goes into six three times, so I'm left with three. How many s's do I have on top? in total? Three. three. I have one here and two there. That gives me S to the third. And how many T's do I have in total? How many? Six. Six. Good. Now check. <clears throat> do you have any negative exponents? No. Do you have any constants or, that can, or numbers that can be simplified? No. Do you have any letters that are the same on top and bottom that you can cross out? No? Okay. We're good. Because, do you see how there was two S's down here? Yeah. Right? So I moved it up to the numerator to make it positive. Mm -hmm. So then I had one S already. And then I moved the other two up here. So I had a total of three. Good question. Hi. So we're just going to zoom and pretend it's not there. Okay, guys, look. Look, 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 look. Again, there's a lot of ways that you can get yourself confused. Just take your time. What do I do first? with this negative two that's on the outside. What do I have to do? Distribute. I gotta distribute it, okay? So it goes to the y, agreed? Where else does it go? The to the three, good, Terrell. It goes to the three and to the z. So I have three to the negative two, and I have z to the what? Negative six. Negative six, good, Jimmy. Because when you have a power raised to a power, what do you do? Multiply. Multiply, good. Now, I have a bunch of negatives. We don't like that. So if I have y to the negative second in the top, in the numerator, how can I make it become positive? Flip it, put it in the bottom. How can I make 3 to the negative second become positive? Put it on the top. How can I make z to the negative 6 become positive? Put it on the top, good. Is there any simplifying that I can do here? Yep, three to the second power is what? Nine. So I have nine, z to the sixth, y to the second. <clears throat> I know this is gonna sound crazy, but this is kind of fun. <laughs> right, are you guys super pumped? Right, okay, good, good. <laughs> you can make a TikTok to, you know, this stuff, it'd be awesome. You laugh, you could go viral and miss, and then you can come back and thank me. Right, <laughs> okay, scientific notation. <clears throat> you guys aren't gonna use scientific notation much. We're gonna go over it. You have seen this before in science, I know. If you use scientific notation to make numbers that are really big, more manageable, or to make numbers that are really small, more manageable. Okay, let's do some examples before I just go through this. If you wanna write each number in scientific notation, it's always based on the power of 10. What you want to do, first and foremost, I want you to put a decimal point. If there is not, if it's a whole number, that decimal point is at the end. <clears throat> what 
we're always going to write our scientific notation. You want the first number right here to be between 1 and 10. It's got to be bigger than 1 and less than 10, meaning you're going to move the decimal point over to where the first number is between 1 and 10. I'll show you what I mean by that. And then however many times you move that decimal point, that's what your exponent is. So it's always going to be something times 10 to the something, always. This is a big number, right? It's not huge, but it's big. We're going to write it a little more manageable. So if I took my decimal point and I wanted this first number that I write down to be between 1 and 10, if I go like this, 1, is, that, is this now between 1 and 10? No. What about here? No. What about here? What about here? Yes. 5.6? Okay. So I have 5.692. How many spaces did I move my decimal point? Four. One, two, three, four. What does that become? My exponent. That's it. <clears throat> if you make a big number smaller, your exponent is positive. If you make your little number, quote unquote, bigger looking, your exponent's what? Negative. Negative. If you move the decimal place to the left, your exponent's positive. If you move it to the right, your exponent's negative. However you want to look at it. But I have, I'm going to have a number times 10 to the something here. This is a what? Tiny number or a big number? Tiny. Tiny. Here's my decimal place. Is my exponent going to be negative or positive? Negative. negative. So let's move our decimal point to where this number in the front is between 1 and 10. So I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is 9.3 between 1 and 10? Yeah. So I can write 9.3. And how many times did I move? 1, 2, 3, 4, how many? Negative 5. Negative 5. Awesome. So however you want to remember that, guys, if you're moving left Right? If we're moving to the left, our exponent is positive. Move left, positive exponent. If we move the decimal place right, what kind of exponent is it? Hi, hello. Negative. Negative. <clears throat> However you need to remember that. What kind of notation is this in? It's in scientific. What are we going to do? Put it into a decimal. So think about this. 6.97 times 10 to the ninth. This is going to be what kind of a number? Huge or teeny? Huge. So I'm going to write 6.97. How many places am I moving my decimal point to the right? One. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What do I put in all those spaces? Zeros. Zeros. We have to have placeholders. So there's one here, 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 here. Does that make sense? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at this one. <clears throat> I have 4.6271 times 10 to the negative 6. Which way am I going to move my decimal point? To the left. How many spaces? One, two, three, four, five, six. What do I put in all those spaces? Zero. Good job, guys. You guys remember this? Brandon, I'm almost done, babe. Hang on. Whoops. All right. If A is B is this and that, approximate the quotient. What does the word quotient mean? It's a division problem. Oh. You're talking about, I understand what you mean. But yeah, it's, quotient just means division. So they're telling me to do A times B divided by C. Agreed? Okay, so what is A? 0. 0.00. Let's write that in scientific notation. If I go over, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, correct? So it's 4.6 times 10 to the 4th, right? And then B is 1.697 times 10 to the 22nd divided by what? 
2.91 times 10 to the negative 18. Just showing you how to do this. Watch. <clears throat> do you guys see how we have all of the same bases? Right? What's, our, what's the same base that you see with exponents? 10, right? So I'm going to separate the numbers. I'm going to say 4.6 times 1.697. And again, you won't have one of these, but 2.91 if you ever see something like that. Because you can take multiplication apart and you can put it back together, right? Same thing. So now over here, I'm going to just use my 10. I have 10 to the negative fourth times 10 to the 22nd divided by 10 to the negative 18. You guys agree with that? I just took the, the second part. Just leave this. You don't have a calculator. Just leave that for right now. Again, you guys aren't going to have a problem like this. But just say you had to simplify this. We'll work on this, this simplification. What would I do first? What do I not like? What do I see that I don't like? Negative. Negatives. So how can I rewrite this where all of my exponents are positive? How would you guys rewrite it? Tell me, what's in the numerator, what's in the denominator? 10 to the 18th is in the numerator. What else is in the numerator? 10 to the 22nd, and what's in the denominator? 10 to the fourth. Do you guys see how Nadia just did that? Why did the negative four go to the denominator and the negative 18 went to the numerator? Yep, because they're negative, you want to switch their places. Perfect. So I can simplify this further. I can rewrite the numerator as 10 to the what? How many 10s do I need? Uh, if I have 18 and 22, that's 40, right? So 10 to the 40th over 10 to the 4th. I can still simplify a little bit. 10 to the what? 10 to the 36th. Now, you guys aren't, whoops, you guys aren't going to have calculators, so don't worry about this problem per se because I'm not going to have you multiply this because you're not going to have a calculator. This is what I need you to understand is how we can manipulate exponents. Let's talk for one second because we're done now. This is it. If you guys have an exponent that is negative, if it's in the numerator, how do you make it positive? Put in the denominator. If it's in the denominator, how do you make it positive? Numerator. numerator. If you have a power, 6 to the 3rd to the 5th power, a power raised to a power, what do you do? Say it with confidence. Multiply. Multiply. Good. That looks like a multiplication problem, doesn't it? Yeah. If you have a to the 4th times a to the 7th, what do you do? Add. I have four A's and I have seven. How many total do I have? Eleven. Same base, add exponents. If you are multiplying the same base, add exponents. If you're dividing the same base, what do we do? Subtract. If you guys don't see that, write, write it out. Who cares? If I have X to the if I have X to the fifth divided by X to the third, how many X's are in X to the fifth? There's five. Right? How many x's are in x to the third? Three. When you are dividing, if you have something on top that is the exact same as the bottom, cross out, cross out, cross out. What am I left with? Two. Two. Where? In the numerator, in the top. How would I write x times x? x squared. That's it. That's it.